Hi, I'm David Picciuto, and today we're gonna to get you up and running on your fifth generation full spectrum hobby laser. This is the first in a video series that I'm doing with Rockler on this machine. Let's get started. Let's briefly talk about safety. The laser that does the cutting and engraving is actually invisible, and the red dot that you may be familiar with is just used for material alignment. You never want to engrave or cut anything with PVC or vinyl, which produces a corrosive vapor, and never engrave any unknown materials. Never leave the machine unattended, as there's always risk of fire. I highly suggest getting a fire extinguisher and keeping it next to your laser. A halogen fire extinguisher like this will not harm your machine or the electronics like other fire extinguishers and is much easier to clean up in case you ever need it. Never operate the machine without proper ventilation. The laser itself does not release any harmful vapors, but you do want the vapors and smoke from the burning material to be filtered or exhausted. There's not much assembly. It's pretty much assembled right out of the box, but there are a couple things that you do need to do to get yourself set up. So let's go over that. To cool the laser, you need a reservoir with distilled water. I got this cheap bucket from Home Depot. You'll run a water in tube from the laser to the pump and a water out tube from your laser into the bucket. Set your included water pump in the bucket and cover it with a couple gallons of distilled water. Be sure to use distilled and not tap so it doesn't leave deposits that could ruin your laser tube. There's also a hookup for an air assist. Just run a tube from the air compressor to the back and another tube to the lens assembly. This pressurized air helps the laser cut through the material more quickly and prevents the formation of flames. The next thing you do is hook up your air filter or in my case an exhaust system. I have this fan and metal dryer hose hooked up to the back of the unit and blowing out a window. It is highly recommended to run everything into a power strip. This allows you to turn on everything at once and make sure you don't accidentally forget to run the water pump which could damage your machine. There are a few zip ties that you'll need to cut that holds things in place during shipping. Once you do that you should be able to jog the focusing head using the arrow buttons on the front of the machine. Now you'll want to do a laser tube test to make sure it was not damaged during shipping. And then a mirror alignment test to make sure nothing was knocked out of alignment during shipping. In most cases, you won't need to do anything, but it's a good idea to check just to be sure. You'll need to download Retina Engrave to your computer from the link provided. Connect your computer to the laser with a USB cable or Ethernet cable. Power on the laser, start the software. You should see connected in the lower left corner and be able to jog the assembly from the software. Place your material in the machine and adjust the lens assembly using the billet. The lens assembly should always be the height of the billet from the top of the workpiece. From the software, you'll want to home the machine. We're going to engrave my logo on this piece of plywood. I'll load up my PDF containing my artwork and choose File Print. You'll then want to choose Full Spectrum Engineering Driver as your printer, and it will then send the artwork to the Retina Engrave software. From here, you can resize it if needed. You can then jog your head to the upper left corner of where you'd like your artwork to begin. Click on the Run Job Perimeter button, and the machine will show you where the artwork will be engraved. Always do this to be sure your registration is in place and your artwork doesn't go off the edges of the material. Once you're all set, hit start job and watch the laser do its thing.
next video, we're going to go over the software a bit more and show you the difference between engraving and cutting as well as finding the correct speed and intensity for your particular material. I'm David Pachuto. You can find out more about me on my website at makesomething.tv. As always, stay passionate and make something.